Hello and welcome to CTEC's Intervol training series. In this video, we'll cover the use of EVS models and EVS data in Interval. Interval is composed of three components and only the core component will be used in today's video. So for our customers that already have EVS, they can create 3D models of geology and or chemistry and those can be input into Interval. So I'm going to start off with an, a model created in EVS in our EFB format, that's EVS field file in the binary format. And I'm going to read this model in. When I read the model in, it'll give me the option of how I want to color the model or the symbology in ArcGIS. So it's loading the file now, and in a second it will offer us that choice. And I'll start with the default, which is to color by the geology, the layer names. Now you can see in this list that we have the layer names and also we have concentration data and some other materials. So we'll just start off with the layer names. And so we have our model. Now this is not a trivial model. It's about a half million nodes. It's a truly volumetric model of both geology and chemistry. Um, when it comes in, we have a vertical scale of one. So we'll increase that to about four. And here's our 3D model of the geology and chemistry. Our symbology shows us the names of the layers. We have fill, silt, clay, gravel, and sand in this model. So let's start off with some of the things we can do with interval. Right off the bat, I'm going to take this model and I'm going to cut it. Now, a cut is different than a slice in that a cut gives you everything on one side of the cutting plane. So I'm going to rotate this around and basically the side that's inside of the gray is the portion that we get to keep. And so I can move the slice around, I can rotate it however I'd like. I'm just going to choose about right there, tell it to cut, and when we tell it to cut, we're going to have it hide the layer that's here already and copy the symbology, meaning that it's going to color it the same way as our model that we're cutting. All right, so now let's add in the data that created this model. Now there was both geology and chemistry data, but I'm going to just add in the chemistry data for now. So here it is in CTEX and light point data value format. So this is soil samples that were taken at point rather than over an interval or a well screen. And I import that and it's going to detect that this data is collected in boring. So it's going to separately import borings and the analytical data. The chemistry data will be on this scale. So my lower bounds are zero, but I'm going to clip them to 10 to the minus three. And for the borings, it's going to color them to where they change color every 10 feet from the top surface down. So there's a boring or two that's back in this cut model. We could see those very easily by just turning off the cut or making it transparent if we want to see into those. But there's our chemistry data. So now let's, let's go ahead and copy the chemistry data and onto our 3D model so that it's, so the 3D model is colored the same way. So we select the chemistry data here and we use our copy symbology tool and I'm going to copy that onto the 3D model. So copy to the, the actual primary 3D volumetric model and we're going to map to total hydrocarbon still. Now, I don't even have it visible right now, so what am I accomplishing? Well, by doing this, now any future subsetting operations, and I'm going to do several, will have exactly the same symbology as my data. Because I'll be copying the symbology from the 3D model when I cut through it. So now let's choose that 3D model here in the interval selector. And then we get all of these choices of things we can do which are slices. Again, we can cut, we can create a plume. So let's just jump right in and do a plume. I'm going to do a plume here. And I could do a plume, which is a subset of geologic layers. In this case, I want to do a plume on total hydrocarbons. I'm going to put my subsetting level at five parts per million. 
and it will inherit the coloring that we just copied, so it'll be copied, colored exactly the same as my data that's displayed right now, the colored data. Okay, so I have my plume for 5 ppm. And notice that it has the same range, 0 0.001 to 81,000, as my chemistry data samples. Again, I could go in here and choose the plume and make it transparent so we could see the data inside. But I'm going to leave it opaque for right now. One of the things you'll notice is this strange graphic kind of flickering that I have where my plume is overlapping the back cut. Because the two occupy the same space, on this surface it's sort of ambiguous which should be viewed. So I can fix that by just cutting away that portion of the plume so that I'm only seeing the plume out here. So I can choose the plume here in the selector and grab the cut module again. Now, by default, cut will cut at exactly the same place it did before, provided the object I'm cutting has those coordinates, X, Y, Z coordinates. So all I have to do is reverse the cut, and now I'm going to keep the part of the plume that is not inside this. I'm going to hide my regular plume and copy its symbology, and boom. It's all clean. Now I have my new cut plume and my original plume, which I'm not doing right now. So let's do some other things. Let's go back to the full model and let's do slice. Now a slice is different from a plume in that a slice is just the cut, a planar object. Again, I can orient any way I'd like. Let's put it through the main part of the volume of the plume. It'll copy the symbology. It's going to hide the input layer, but that input layer is already hidden. Okay, so it's kind of neat. It lets us see the distributions outside of the plume. You can see how the plume matches precisely the values of the slice. And it's looking kind of interesting. Again, if we, if we took this cut plume and made it transparent, and we can see inside of it. And notice that we have boundaries in the plume corresponding to the geology. And that's because this plume also exists with all those individual geologic layers. And we can subset based on those also. Now here we're seeing that flickering again. And that's because we're looking through a transparent surface into the ones behind. And there's actually a way to solve that problem. There's um, surface culling. We could hide the back sides of features. And when we do that, that transparency gets much cleaner. You see, that looks much nicer now. And those are just standard ArcGIS rendering options. OK, so some interesting things. Now, when we have a volumetric model, as we do, we can also do things like explode it. So if we wanted to see an exploded model, which isn't going to match all the other things we have which are not exploded, let's go ahead and I'm going to increase the explode distance. I'm going to make it 15. It's going to explode by a geologic layer. It's going to color with the same symbology, which is colored by total hydrocarbons now. When we do this, we might want to turn off these other layers, which I'll show you what it looks like. They're going to kind of be on top of each other. but. Okay, so here we have our, our exploded layers. And we're seeing on the back side where they're coincident with the back cut of the geology. Same situation we described earlier. So if we were to turn off some of these other objects, and it starts to look a little better. So we can see the concentrations that exist at the boundaries between geologic materials. And we could slice through this exploded model. We can do plumes of this exploded model. We could actually explode any of the objects that we created before because they all have geology information also. So let's 
turn off the exploded and go back to turn on the others that we were looking at previously. All right, and then one of the last things I want to demonstrate is this is wonderful and this is all three dimensional, but what if you wanted to create some output that can be used in ArcMap? And there are, there are many things we can do, but one of the things that we that is very useful to do is create a fence diagram that would follow a path through this model and take that fence, straighten it out to 2D, and export it to ArcMap. So let's do that. First thing we need is a path. So I'm going to add a path that I have here. And it is this painting facility fence path. Uh, now notice I'm adding it with normal add data ArcGIS because it's a shapefile. Okay, so you can see that path. And I'm going to turn off the cut on the back side. This path snakes through going from boring to boring, and it goes right through the heart of the plume, through the hottest parts of my plume. So I'm going to take that path, our 3D model here, and we'll choose the fence option. So it's going to cut using a feature, which is this painting facility fence path. We're going to have it flattened to 2D, and project its output into the XY plane. I'm going to have it do a vertical exaggeration. Let's just do five because it's going to be a little longer than the actual extent of this because of the zigzag. And initially we'll create one that copies the symbology from the parent. So it's going to have the total hydrocarbon. So we're ready to go. So let's just create this one first. All right, now where to go? Well, it's straightened to two dimensions. So it's in a coordinate system that is x along its path length, and y is the depth um, or the elevation. And so it's right here. It's turned on, but it's not in the same coordinate space as my original model. So I'm going to zoom to that layer. And let's look at it from straight down. And there's our wonderful cut. So the next thing I want to do on this, I'm going to put ISO lines on this object. So let's select this object, which is our fence. And I'll put ISO lines on it right here, which I'm going to copy from its input right now. All right, there's my, my ISO lines. And now I want to go back to my other model. Now let's zoom to it. And let's create another fence. So we'll just click on the fence again. Same features, same flatten, same vertical scale of 5. This time I'm not going to copy the symbology. I'm going to instead use the symbology of the geology. So once it creates it, it's going to ask me how I want what I want to use for symbology. I'm going to use the default layer names. And that's done. So now let's go back to zoom to this new layer. And again, here it is. We've got geology and chemistry. And again, we're going to see both of those because they're in exactly the same space. But you can see the ISO lines are view visible on top of the geology. So I'm done right here. I'm going to save my arc scene project, which I've already named Painting Facility. And we're going to jump into ArcMap. Start with a blank project, and I'm going to add some interval data. So I'm going to add my second fence cut. And I'm going to add my ISO lines. Now I need to tell it what to add. It's going to be colored by total hydrocarbons. And we want to put it on the same scale as the original data. So I'm going to make this 81,000, which was the original data. And there, there we are. That looks fabulous. OK, and at this point, I can add a grid. Now our grid tool has some 
interesting options to it. So let's click on properties. And the first thing we want to tell it is that our y-axis has a scale of five times. When I apply that, now the elevations on the left are going to be the proper elevations along the path of the fence. And then next, we want to handle the display options. And we're going to select our projection path, which was the same shape file that we created this with. And we're going to display projected X and Y coordinates. And we have two options. We can include coordinates that occur at the tick marks or we can include the corners that define the path. I'm going to choose the path corners. And let's apply and add that. All right. So let's just see where we are. We need to zoom out a little bit. And we can move up. So now we can see that though our fence is almost 600 feet long, the coordinates for both our original X and Y axes along the path of the fence were very different and they actually go up and down because of the path of the fence. But I don't want to have two different things labeled X so I can go back into the properties here and the X axis which was labeled fence I'm going to label it PL for path length and the Y axis which is labeled Y should actually be elevation. And if I now do both of these, I've got both of those relabeled. I have a geologic fence with contour lines corresponding to concentration in ArcMap. And with that, we'll call this training video concluded. Thank you for taking the time to take a look at Interval for ArcGIS from SeaTech Development Corporation.